ready? Let's go. Welcome, everyone. You are now tuned into another amazing edition of Sonia on Air at home. I am your lovely host, Sonia Hudson Payne, and I have another great guest for you, as I always do. Joining me, I'm so excited, I have Christina Bell. You can catch her on Lifetime TV's um, recent film, The Clock Sisters, The First Ladies of Gospel. Uh, Christina, how are you? I'm doing great. How about yourself? I'm doing well. You know, I'm, I'm starting off every single conversation just doing a self-care check-in. How are you doing um, during this whole pandemic and quarantine? I'm fine. <laughs> Staying out of people's way. Okay? <laughs> no, <I'm> wonderful. <laughs> you want near me. I don't want, if you don't have a, a glove or a mask, I'm getting anxiety. Right. So have you me gone outside? Too. So I, I, we do go outside. Uh, I actually had to go and pick up some groceries and everything. So, um, but I, my very first time shopping online for groceries, I don't mind shopping online for everything else, but the grocery thing, I was like, eh, but, <laughs> but, you know, we went and picked them up and uh, that was that, you know, I didn't have to go inside of Walmart or anything like that. So I was good. Um, my daughter, uh, she was in the hospital a few weeks ago. So her immune system is compromised. So we have to be like really, really careful Hi. with um, who we come in contact with. And uh, But we're, we're making sure that we, we steer clear of pretty much everybody except for family that we know uh, have not been to work in more than, you know, two weeks and all that stuff. So we've been good. We've been good. Matter of fact, my daughter was upset with me. She was like, please close the windows because she thinks it's just going to come in through windows. I'm like, come on, girl. <laughs> no, you too. I can't imagine your daughter. I'm like, if they're saying that it's airborne, why do we have the windows open? I don't, I don't get it. I'm paranoid. <laughs> I'm paranoid. I'm fine, Sonia. You'll be fine. <laughs> but I'm about to try, you know, I've been ordering things online. I've ordered so much from Amazon. I've never ordered so much in my life. But I was going to start ordering groceries as well. So you've just given us something else that we can do during the quarantine. So you've been ordering groceries? Yes, yes. So, um, but I didn't order off of Amazon. Um, I've ordered food from Amazon before and I was not happy. So <laughs> I went ahead and ordered foods though. Whole foods. See, I've not done the whole foods thing on Amazon. So, I mean, I really can't say that, but um you know, I, I ordered from, from Walmart and I just went and picked up the bag from um, the pickup part and we drove right on off and we were good. <laughs> Still using gloves and masks and all that stuff. So. Yeah, because I heard Walmart ordering their food online. The process was pretty much, it was quick. It wasn't difficult yeah. at all. So I'll be trying yeah. for all of you tuning in, online Walmart shopping is the, yes. the way to yeah. go. Let's just get right into this conversation. When I tell okay. you, I am so impressed. I am so honored this space. Now, I know this week for you has been um, a whirlwind. How have you been dealing with <laughs> being kind of thrust into, you know, the stratosphere, everyone knowing your name? How are you dealing with that this week alone? To be honest with you, it feels weird because everybody's going through all of your, your stuff. Like they're going through all of your videos. They're going through all of your photos. And, and it feels like you're just vulnerable. You're just out there for everybody to just see. You know what I'm saying? And so whereas in the beginning, of course, I'm, I'm a gospel singer. Um, so it's kind of almost limited. But when you become uh, somebody that they see on television, you've been playing on a movie or whatever. Like every, I mean, 2.7 million people have seen your face. So it's kind of like, everybody's trying to figure out, well, who is she? Because everybody's like, is that Jill Scott? And I'm like, no, people. <laughs> no, I'm Christina. So, I mean, it's cool to be, you know, to be recognized and all that. But, you know, sometimes it kind of gets, uh, you know, a little weird because you're, you're just open. Everybody sees who you are and um, you can't say the funny stuff that you used to say online. So you got to be careful with what you say. And I'm like, oh, gosh. So, you know. But it's good. It's good. <laughs> One area um, that the attention will be most deserving is you're a gospel singer, amazing voice. Um, and I don't think people know that. I think that they think that you were just 
placed into this role because you're a phenomenal singer. Uh, but you've also had a few albums out. Can you just talk about that briefly? Sure. So I started out with a group called Zio, my group, and uh, from back home in Shreveport, Louisiana. And uh, we sang together for 18 plus years. We were in the industry for 18 plus years. And our first hit was Is My Living in Vain. So we did a remake of Is My Living in Vain. And it got us a lot of notoriety, including with the sisters. And, uh, you know, we got the opportunity to start uh, giving them homage at different shows and stuff and sang with them before. And then, of course, like you just said, I didn't just like I didn't get placed into the role like I definitely had to audition and uh within like less than 24 hours they called us back and they were like yeah so you're Twinkie can you be in Canada in two weeks and I was like uh yeah <laughs> but we as everybody uh that's playing in the the film we all had to work really really hard to get to where we were I, I remember Kiara telling me that she had to audition three times Wow. And I was like, whoa, you know, she had to even leave from Detroit to go and audition in L.A. So, you know, we all had to work. We had to work to get what we wanted and we all got it. So let me just um, backtrack a little bit. We talked about, you know, opportunity and preparing for the opportunities and how I'm just saying how imitate art um, imitate life. Um, but you mentioned that being a gospel singer, sang with your sisters, the first hit song was Is My Living in Vain, mm -hmm. um, and then now you're playing this amazing role. Um, how old were you when you started singing in the church choir? Oh my goodness, um, I probably was about five, probably five, and um, my uncle actually, Uncle Carnell, he, he's the youngest uncle, and he's the one that, that helped me. He's the one that groomed me. He, it, whenever he would come home, he would always be like, yeah, niece, come in here. We're, we're going to practice. We're going to practice. So he would always just take me and, and take me under his wing. And from there, he told me the other day he was just crying because he saw I did an interview. And he's never seen one of my interviews before. He saw I did an interview. And he was like, you were talking about me. And I was like, yeah, I always do. <laughs> But yeah, so, you know, it's it's pretty amazing. You know, God allowed me to, to start off with the choir and then I started my own group after uh, that. I think I was in like the sixth grade and uh, we went from, from there. My sister sang with us, it was five of us. My sister sang with us and uh, we kept going. We kept striving. We, like I said, we started singing the Is My Living in Vain and uh, recorded it. Clark sisters heard it. They were like, y'all are amazing. You know, so it's it's been, you know, a full circle moment, you know? It is definitely full circle. You mentioned, you know, your uncle um, giving you extra wind so that you can soar and fly. And you, you, you mentioned your uncle again. But um, you also mentioned, I was kind of stalking your Instagram a little bit, um, Pastor Johnny McClurkin, who you refer to as uncle. And when I saw you posting pictures with him, it really just confirmed having the right people around you so that you can take it to the next level. So who else in the gospel community do you rely upon to give you your strength? Oh my goodness, so many, it's so many. Kim McFarland, um, let's see, uh, Johnny McClurkin, uh, Fred Hammond. I actually went on tour with him 2018 when I first moved to, to Dallas. Uh, he gave me the opportunity to play in his stage play, the Festival of Praise. So I went on tour with him for three months. Um, after that, came back home and then went on tour with John P. Key. Like doors just kept opening up. So, you know, everybody was uh, taking me under their wings, you know, and, and really uh, grooming me to, to become, I guess, in this movie, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> you know, so it's been absolutely amazing, you know, and, and it's crazy because I've only been working with a lot of legends lately. Like, it's not been just, you know, my era, but it's been a lot of legends that came before me that have really, really been stepping out and doing their thing for years. So it's been absolutely incredible to uh, be able to lean on them and, and, and get that strength that I knew, do need to, to be where I am today. Yeah, well, you body that role, Christina. Let's talk about... You did. Let's talk about the um, the process of um, auditioning. So 
if I researched correctly, the only thing that you did was sent in a video. Was that, is that correct? Come on, research. I love you. <laughs> You've been doing your homework. Yes. What was on that video where the casting director said, you know what? This is going to be our Twinkie. So they gave me three uh, sides to do. I had to do, uh, I auditioned for Twinkie, Denise, and Jackie. And they wanted to see which one I fit in. I thought that I would fit more with Denise because of course when you get sides you only get like a few lines or whatever and so you know you have to do your best on those few lines and so I thought that I had a lot you know as far as being relatable to that character and I thought that I just pulled that one off like really really well but they were like no you're Twinkie like it's it's not necessarily and I know a lot of people think that but it's not necessarily about the look it's more so about how you can give to that character make that character come alive and uh even though they're real people you still have to make them come off of the paper right so i guess you know once they looked at it and uh along with the singing because i had to sing as well so along with the singing the acting and uh i studied how all three of them act and uh i guess i did more studying on twinkie than i did anybody because <laughs> you know like, you know, I, I just, I really tried. I really tried. And so I'm just grateful. I'm grateful that they saw something, you know, to, yeah, to yeah. be able to pull it off. Yeah. But, you know, prior to this, you mentioned, because um, I did my research, that you didn't even see you. yourself as an actress. So if you only saw yourself as a gospel singer, what gave you enough courage to say, I'm going to try to audition for this role? Honestly, my management. They saw so much more in me and uh, it's okay to have people around you that'll push you and tug on you to make you understand that you don't have to stay in a box and that's what I was doing I'd been doing that for years and uh, of course I didn't mind doing church plays or stage plays or anything like that but they were like you have to be on film team like they called me team they were like you have to be on film team because if not, like you're, you're putting yourself inside of this box and saying, you know, I can't do anything else, but you can, like, you can go beyond what you think you can, like, just push yourself, just push yourself. So we, we, we ran lines all of the time. We ran lines. We, uh, I even had to pull my daughter in. I was like, look, you got to read some stuff. You know, she's 11. She's like, okay, what I got to read. <laughs> So, you know, I had everybody around me that in, in my corner, I have a lot of positive people. Um, as a matter of fact, like yourself, like, oh my gosh, I love this interview, but um, I have a lot of positive people around me that have encouraged me, uh, not just um, leading up to the movie, but just in life general. You know, it, it's wonderful to have people that are around you that will tell you, you can do da 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 and don't second guess yourself you got this if you really put your mind to it you know we can't say that we believe in the word of God but then don't take him upon his word you know uh the scripture says I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me well do all things then and and go on about your business girl <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I'm so glad that you spoke to that because just having the right people in your circle um, you know, my daughter's 25 and we're always just having conversations about being mindful of your circle because your, right. your circle can either bring you down or they can help you soar. So I'm glad that you spoke about that. Um, but I also just having a conversation with one of your, uh, your fellow cast members, um, Angela Bur Burchett, who plays Jackie Clark. And we played a little game and um, she told me that you would be called Mother Smurf. Now, your role on the Clark Sisters movie as Twinkie, you were kind of the glue that held everyone together. Are you also like that in, 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 um, in real life as well? No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. Why not? <laughs> no, I'm not. Because, you know, sometimes with, with that, comes a lot of people around you just kind of being argumentative and, and hearing that I I move people out of my way like I because I, I you know you've heard a lot of people say 
Um, you know, I, I just don't do that, that arguing and that fighting and stuff. I literally do not do that. Like I, I can't because it bothers everything within me. Like I, I just, it, I'm one of those type of people that, you know, if, if you feel that way, I, my response is more than likely going to just be, okay. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm not about to argue with you and I'm not about to, you know, try to get you to understand and, and calm down and, you know, pat you and all that stuff. I'm kind of like, oh, oh, okay. All right. All right. So knowing how you are in real life, you know, you don't want to be in the midst of the controversy. How did you prepare for the role of Twinkie? Because like I said, she was the glue that kind of helped the sisters together. So how did you prepare for the role? I definitely did my research and I wanted to make sure that in doing that research, I dug into how she approached everything. I looked at a lot of interviews. She thinks before she speaks and she speaks slower than me. She's like, you know, let me hold off because I don't want to say anything wrong. So me, on the other hand, I'm, I, I speak quick. If it's in my mind, I say what I have to say and I move forward. You know, we're sisters, come on. <laughs> and uh, I, I move on. But Twinkie, she's got uh, definitely, like you said, she's, she's that glue. And um, people depend on her to basically just make sure that everybody else is um, almost to, to, to a degree, they're happier than her. Mm. I ain't like that. Nah. nah, you ain't gonna take my happiness, baby. Ha- you you go on about your <laughs> But you know, in studying her, in in wanting to uh, really become her, I did a lot of studying. I sat down and I was literally glued to YouTube, and um, I wanted to make sure that what I was doing was a depiction of who she is, and I wanted to make sure that I. I became Twinkie on camera. I sat like her because I wanted to make people feel like I am Twinkie. And um, I, I did laugh like her. I asked Kiara, I was like, how does she laugh? And she was like, oh, she just, she does this shoulder thing. And she's like, you know, just to herself. <laughs> Doing that. So, you know, I wanted to become everything that Twinkie was or is so that people would be able to relate and um, say, you know, that is Twinkie. You know, it's it's not Christina because I wanted to get me out of the way in the film. I'm speaking way slower in real life. I'm just me too. You know, <laughs> the, the character of Twinkie she came across as being emotionally complex, right? Yeah. So, what was the hardest scene for you to film where you felt like emotionally drained? There were quite a few. Uh, the scene where I'm with Mama, and I I come in with John, and uh, we you know kind of have it out. I can't believe that you know my mom just wants an organ player, and I've I've only wanted my mom this whole time, you know. So that was emotionally draining, um, especially because in these scenes you have to do them over and over and over and over again, tears, everything. So if that scene runs you about five hours, that's five hours of you just being just really emotionally drained. You know, you're just, you're giving everything and then you're becoming vulnerable in the front of people that you don't even like know. You don't go home with these people. So they're seeing you, you're all in the little room and they hear everything that you're saying. And then on top of that, I've dealt with quite a few things that Twinkie has dealt with. I'm divorced myself. I have a a daughter, um, a, you know, a child, and um, I had it out with my mom, like, now, ain't nobody gonna put their hands on my mama now, you know, but, <laughs> but I've had it out with my mom, you know, and it's a lot of things that I could, I connected with Twinkie on, um, the other scene was when I was in the church, and I had to cry um, to mama, and, and say that I was so sorry, because I knew that I made, I messed up, you know, I made some wrong turns in life, Um, there were just quite a few things that were just really, really emotionally draining, but I would have to jump out of it every single time so that I wouldn't take that home with me. It's hard to, to, to relive those moments, even though, though those were Twinkies moments, they also resonated with me as well. They were my moments as well. Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah. In life or art imitation 
life. So, you know, you talked about some of those emotionally draining scenes. I just want you to clarify something real quick for my viewers and listeners, because there was a scene where we saw Twinkie sell her catalog, her music catalog. And a lot of people, mm -hmm. why did she do that? But once again, I did my research and I found out that years later, she was able to acquire her even back. back. Is that true? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. yes. And as a matter of fact, I believe uh, uh, Jackie helped her to do that. Really? Yeah. That's from what I understand. I, I could definitely be wrong, but from what I understand, she helped her to, to, to reclaim it back because she was like, you know, sis, this is your music. You work too hard for it. You spent too many hours working on this stuff and not just with us, but for yourself. Like you lost a lot of time for your personal life to do this. So let's get this stuff back. Let's get this, you know, back on track and uh, you'd be able to make money off of what you have put so much time into. You know, you don't want to have everybody singing your music and you're not getting paid for it. Let's get this music back, honey. <laughs> Part of the story is so important because in and having conversations with so many artists who don't have control over their music they don't own the right to their music so for me you know finding out that Twinkie reacquired the rights of a movie that could be another film in itself for this current generation Absolutely. of um, current artists and emerging artists but let's just talk about the film you know again um, you filmed in Canada Canada correct yes and yes. how long did filming take place we were there from January, I believe the end of January, well, the middle of January up until March. Um, yeah, we left uh, like maybe in the middle of March, but yeah, we were there that long. It was so cold, oh my gosh. Yeah, it's crazy. I'm not used to that. I'm from the South, so I'm like, you know, heat is my friend. I don't know what this is, okay? <laughs> <laughs> wow, wow, wow. So, you know, like I said, this movie, it was just so amazing. But before you started filming, like I said, at the onset of this conversation, you said that you didn't even consider yourself as an actress. So after you filmed this amazing film, The Clark Sisters, The First Ladies of Gospel, what did you learn about yourself? Literally that I can do all things through Christ. Literally. Like, I don't know why for so many years I, I put myself inside of a box as though I couldn't do anything else except for please God this way. But I've definitely found out that I can do whatever God says that I can do. And I have to open my ear to just that. Like, don't close your ear to it, Christina. Like, really delve into everything that you've ever wanted to acquire in life and do it. Do it. Even if it fails. Like, You'll never know if you're great at something until you actually try it, you know? Some things you don't have to try, right. but some things you do need to try. You need to make sure that you can or cannot do it, especially if it's good for you, you know what I'm saying? So I've definitely taken myself out of that box, and now my manager like, okay, slow down. Like, no, wait a minute. <laughs> One step at a time, dear. <laughs> you will be auditioning for more films, will you? Yes, I will. I actually just got an agent a couple of days ago, and uh, we've been working with him for uh, about, well, we've been working on getting him for about a year now, and uh, he saw the film, and he was like, okay, it's go time. Let's do it. Let's do it. So, yeah, we got with the top agency out of uh, uh, California, Pantheon, um, Nick Roses, and I am super ecstatic about working with him. Nice. Let's talk about the music. When can we expect some new music? Um, so right now we have uh, Just Believe that is out and my single uh, is called Going as well. It's at radio um, and you can also purchase that as well. But um, I'm also working on uh, new music right now. As, as of right now, we don't have a date just yet, but we will get one really, really soon. Wow. So, you know, I had an argument with my daughter because I watched the movie twice by myself and then once with mm -hmm. her and she was like, mom, they're not singing. And I was like, yes, they are singing. So she's in the background, so she's listening. So can you, <laughs> did you and the rest of the cast, was that you really singing? Yes, that was us. That was definitely us. <laughs> it was us, daughter, it was us. <laughs> yes, it was us. You know, Donald Lawrence had a vision for, well, actually, Christine first. 
Christine, which is the uh, director, Christine Swanson, she she had a vision. She wanted to make sure that we could um, we could bring to life the old school Clark sister sound. So they wanted the young sound of the Clark sisters, right? So we got with Donald Lawrence, which is the uh, music producer for the film, and he's a fanatic of the Clark sisters. So he was in the studio and he was like, so in order to create this sound, this, these are the ingredients that you need. So he went step by step by step, told us what it is that we needed to do. And we did just that. He's like, playback. We listened, we were like, uh, so who is that? Cause we've been in here doing all this work now. Is that the talk system or what? And he was like, no, that's you guys. So we were even like taken aback. We were like, like just, mind blown because this is so amazing the sound that he got out of us and we were like we didn't know we could do that and we're we weren't even friends <laughs> like we came on set we didn't even know each other right. so it was crazy we we doing songs and stuff together like we've been singing together for 30 years <laughs> and he gave you some ingredients so that you can get that sound of the the Clark sisters what were some of those ingredients to make sure that we're, first of all, that we're listening to uh, whoever the the um, character is that we have, listen to them very intently. Make sure that you listen to him because he told us what we needed to do to get their sound and texture. Um, round your O or, you know, take out the, the, the nasally E or whatever, like however you would sing normally, take that out because the Clark sisters sound like absolutely nobody else in the world. Nobody can really mimic them. So we're going to try our hardest to get you guys as close as possible. So what I did was I did the same thing that uh, Kiara told me that she was doing. She would go to sleep every night with uh, different music that her mom had every single night, go to sleep with it in her ear, you know, just playing it over and over and over again. And then I started doing it and I was like, oh, this is cool. Like, okay, so I, I can get it. I can get it. So that was my thing. I made sure that I was, you know, sleeping with the music. It 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 definitely not only made me want to <laughs> pull this character off, but I definitely got so, you know, just engrossed with everything that she was saying in the music. Like Twinkie is an incredible writer, you know? Like she literally went into the Bible, picked scriptures out and like wrote songs to those scriptures and made sure that they made sense for the listener. It was so crazy. Like you brought the sunshine. She's all in the Bible. Like nobody's thinking that Twinkie comes up with this stuff straight from the Bible. She studied the Bible. Like that's the reason why she, she, she took so much time away from everybody else because she was studying the Bible. So everything that Twinkie did, Donald was like, do that so that we can get this sound. You need to make sure that this texture is here. You need to make sure that, you know, that sound is there. So that's, that's pretty much what we, we did. And we spent hours in the studio making sure that it was right. Wow. I'm <laughs> yeah. the favor, um, and I hope okay. yes, um, because we definitely want to hear your beautiful and amazing voice. Can you sing a little bit of your purpose? Sure, uh, let's see. You brought the sunshine in my life throughout the lifeline. Thank you. Oh, yes, you see, you made me smile. Thank you so much for that. So for my viewers and listeners who want to continue following you because you're absolutely amazing and you're gorgeous too, by the way, can you just give me your handle sure uh instagram is christina underscore official nice well christina thank you so so much um this is just the beginning for you thank and i know you. that you've been doing this for such a long time but where you are about to go this is just oh. in me and thank we you. are going to keep on supporting you we're going to keep lifting you up in prayer you got this sis thank you so much for listening to my podcast Thank you, Sonia. Love you. Take care. Talk to you soon. You Bye. Too. Bye.